Welcome everyone. Uh, this is the first seminar in our Sense uh, World Environmental Day workshop and uh, we are very happy um, you are here with us. Today, the, the first day of this workshop, there are with us uh, Mardik uh, Refalo from Eco Schools from Malta and is Hernan, uh, Felipe Araya and Catarina Alves, who uh, they are now in Malmo University finishing uh, their master. And uh, at the end of this uh, first seminar, we'll have practical ideas from uh, Sofia Sigara and Gonka Gildirim uh, at the end of this uh, evening. Um, um, I am Agustin Bastida, mo moderator of the Sustainability Education Network Service eTwini. As you all probably know, is one of the future group in eTwini. There are 10 or 11 groups uh, that for um, their, their thematic or the importance um, for the, and they have a, a huge number of participants and uh, this is why we have uh, um, the responsibility to organize this sort of uh, seminars and, and events. Um, and why we create this, this workshop? Uh, well, I think it's very important that uh, since the SENSE group uh, promote actions that contribute to generate skills that facilitate the competencies in development sustainable goals and facilitate information about the 2030 agenda through different means like organizations, like eco schools, experts like Felipe and Catarina, and teachers as uh, Sofia and Gonka. So, uh, as you see, we have today a perfect and very complete menu. So, um, you are going to, to get a lot of unuseful information. I introduced you Marvik. Marvik um, uh, is a, a, an officer from Eco School in uh, Malta. Um, she is uh, an ESD teacher and Eco School officer, as I said. She originally graduated, graduated as a maths and primary teacher, holds as a postgraduate certificate in teaching ICT and a master in the intercultural environmental management of schools. At this moment, she helps coordinate the BFWE programs in the Maltese Islands also supporting schools enrolled in the Eco Schools program directly by providing resources, teacher training, hands and workshops and discussions with the students and guides Eco Schools committees in following the FEE programs, encouraging students empowerment, a whole school approach and contacts with the whole community. She has been into eTwinning for quite a few years, encouraging schools to do eco schools collaborations through eTwinning projects, also providing training in this regard. And today, today uh, she is going to introduce the international eco school program at the schools with teachers. Um, Marvik, now is your turn. Okay, Welcome. Thank you. thank you, Augustine. Hello, everybody. From the comments, I'm already seeing that some some of the uh, participants are already in Echo School, so they probably know already about the process. Well, I'll try to explain and give examples as well. So, can I go ahead, Augustine? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so, um, the Echo Schools um, is run by the Foundation for Environmental Education, which is based in Denmark, 
and together there are 77 countries participating in the Foundation for Environmental Education programs. There are five programs as shown. Can you see the screen? The five programs as shown below the blue flag for beaches and marinas, eco schools, learning about forests, and young reporters for the environment for schools, and green key hotel, um, for hotels. Obviously, today we're going to focus on the three programs um, for schools. So, um, the idea of Eco Schools is to engage engage uh, the younger generations. That's why I said empowerment for for students. These are an idea of the countries which are participating in Eco Schools, 68 in all. You can see probably some of, of the countries that you come from. And that's an idea, even um, if I, I'll be providing the presentation afterwards, you can click on the uh, link below and uh, you can get into the details of the organization which is leading the fee programs in your countries. So this is an idea of the numbers of participants all over the world. It's practically 19 and a half million students involved and one and a half million teachers. It's not just students, teachers and schools, but also local partners. It's a, a question that uh, schools are encouraged to uh, get out of the school boundary and into the community. Presentations got stuck. Okay, so this is the process uh, which we call the seven-step uh, process for uh, eco schools. At the center, there is the uh, eco schools committee. That's what uh, we start with. We encourage students to uh, be participative and to get uh, students, possibly even from each class, to uh, get into the committee. Usually, um, a lot of students want to participate, so some schools end up doing even elections to have the um, representatives from the, all the classes into the committee. It's important that the committee is uh, mainly made up of students and uh, the least adult intervention as possible. But they, uh, during the process, uh, end up, for example, asking uh, caretakers the senior management team, parents. It depends on what they are working on. I give more ideas as we go along. So the second step is, it's quite slow, is the environmental review. To give you an idea of the environmental review, the students have to go around the school and uh, see what needs to be done. By environment, it's not just uh, speaking about the greenery, but also about uh, water, electricity consumption, waste, littering, um, even the ethos of the school, how happy the kids are, whether they want something different or to change things and the sort. I will be showing uh, different things, even the photos. Um, the students go around asking other students their opinion about uh, particular things. These kids over here um, are actually checking uh, water consumption to see what's going on in the school, how much is being uh, used. These are an idea of the teams that uh, are considered and worked upon by the uh, Eco Schools Committee. Most of them are sort of the usual ones, all obviously related to, uh, to the environment, water, litter, biodiversity, transport but they can get into quite a lot more detail. Nutrition patterns, healthy lifestyles, not just eating healthy, uh, road safety, landscaping, well, you get the whole. This is just an example. This, this list is just an example. Um, some students, for example, obviously the teams chosen depend on the, uh, on the country and the school well, on the school situation, for example, some students, some schools focus on migration or uh, 
uh, the others focus on uh, inclusion. It depends on the school, uh, the school's particular situation, the school's needs. Obviously, all of these can be linked to the sustainable development goals, which I'll be speaking about later on. But first, I'm going to speak about the seven steps. Um, an idea of how uh, review is done is collecting numbers, checking in classes, for example. Um, uh, students check all the classes to see how many um, uh, of the students in the whole school are bringing and using reusable bottles rather than disposable ones. What type of packaging is being used within the school, and that sort of thing. And as you can see, they can and they can process the data and learn through it using other subjects, which is in fact another of the seven steps. Once the environmental re uh, review is done, the committee discuss the results, and uh, from the results they decide on which team they're going to focus and they do the action plan accordingly. An idea of an action plan is that, for example, they uh, want more plants in the school. So they, part of the action plan is setting up a timetable about who's going to take care of the plants, watering them, plant, planting more uh, trees, for example, in the garden and things like these. This is an idea of an action plan. For, for example, this school um, uh, decided to work on recycling, uh, collecting more plastic caps because they had already started doing basic recycling, and they discovered that plastic caps can be collected separately and uh, can be put to better use. They say what's going to be done what's going, when, uh, when it's going to be done, if they need anything, for example, sometimes they need funds, they need money to buy something. Uh, the time frame during which part of the year, unless it's ongoing throughout the year, who's going to help or it's either a link person, um, the president of the committee, uh, a parent, it depends on the, on the way they're going to work. And possibly also identify curriculum links, if they're going to do use maths in, their, in the way they do it. Sorry. So, once they, they have the action plan, once they have the action plan settled, they start working and doing what they had planned. The students are made aware that it's not necessary that they get to do 100% of what has been planned. During the year, they will learn that sometimes what they plan cannot be done or is not so successful and they learn to um, make plan B or think up different ways of going around the situation even the following year, not necessarily for this year. Well, they learn to reason out and take responsibility as well. Once the actions are being taken, they don't just say, oh, we're done, but um, they monitor what they're doing. They check, for example, this school had been uh, checking the amount of litter there is in the school. And they were actually checking and weighing the amount of waste produced by each class. And it was not celebrating those who got the most waste, but those who got the least waste. And uh, the older kids took care to, uh, to uh, sort of give small rewards to those who did the best efforts. That's also celebrating successes. As I already said, um, the, what's being done is always linked to the curriculum. It's quite easy, for example, to uh, if you're doing a language lesson, to uh, ask teachers to, for example, take a text related to the topic they're focusing on. So. Uh, it's quite good to have something about energy, water, um, collecting data and using it in maths, relating to science, perhaps even religion, depending on the school, uh, relating to history, how things were done in the past, uh, culture, well, 
just a little bit of imagination. Most of the, of the things are usually done. It's the linking that helps and makes more sense for the students. When the students um, are linking their actions to their lessons, it helps them remember more. It, it makes the lessons more meaningful. Uh, informing and involving. It's very good for uh, the committee, and I don't stop at the committee, actually, uh, that what is done, they speak about it. Usually they start with informing the whole school and school assemblies what they're doing, but uh, committees go out into uh, the community. They write on the newspapers, they uh, go on social media, they uh, contact local councils, they contact uh, companies and organizations who can help them out with what they're doing. And, uh, well, they get as many people as, as possible involved. This is a whole school approach, so it's not the committee doing something and the others are just learn hearing about, but it's the committee doing things, getting everybody in the school informed, students, teachers, um, everybody who works in the school, actually, and the families. That's how they go out into the community. Uh, notice boards are quite a good example of how to uh, give information about what's being done, and they are they, they are uh, it's ideally that they are they are displayed in the entrance in the school entrance so that people all the people getting into the school get to know about it. Students' work is exhibited, and not necessarily only in the school, but also outside. As I already said, going on the, in the press and involving uh, the authorities, local councils, uh, and the government. Um, coming from Malta, I'm quite proud to say that uh, the uh, eco schools in Malta every year they get a, a, a parliamentary session the kids representatives from the eco schools get to sit um, among the members of parliament and the kids tell them their suggestions they speak about current situations and they they really manage to give quite uh, good suggestions how things can be can uh, can be done in, in the country as well. I'm proud to say that things are changing because of, of what the students are saying. Well, this is one uh, one school which uh, is doing uh, an e-twinning project, an eco-school doing an e-twinning project involving uh, eco-schools and LEAF and, and sharing information about the environment. If I have time at the end, I can show you some, some things that they've been doing. Finally, finally the ECHO code. Uh, ECHO schools are invited to uh, do an ECHO code, which in a few words or in a few pictures, whoever sees the eco code says, oh, the school is working on that team. It's trying to get people involved in this thing. It's, it's quite good to express oneself in a few words rather than having to read a whole article about what the school is doing. These are examples of uh, eco codes done by, by students. I haven't said about it yet, but Eco, eco schools is managed from uh, infant schools from three year olds to university level. It can be adapted to all ages and uh, and it's been functioning quite quite good. Actually, we have eco campuses for uh, colleges and uh, it's working there as well. Through the years that I've been in eco schools, I've seen the difference. When we started, it was mostly in primary schools. But as the years went along and the students went on to secondary schools and post-secondary schools, we started seeing the difference there. It's a ripple effect. Well, 
it's all about education for sustainable development. So it's important that we understand what sustainable development means, connecting to the real environmental problems, being in touch with reality, finding uh, solution, solution, solutions to what is uh, currently the problem, sort of, and learning through uh, discovery, through exploring as well. And uh, it's not just knowledge, it's a lifestyle, it's sustainable living. So, um, I'll just say a word about the LEAVE program and after a word about the uh, Young Reporters for the Environment, which is also, as I said, an educational program managed by the Foundation for Environmental Education. Learning about forests it encourages outdoor learning, it's appreciating uh, the plants and the trees that we have outside, creating awareness uh, of how important these are in our, on our planet and what difference they're doing. Uh, it ha the LEAF program helps students to reconnect to our outdoors. It's not just going out and seeing buildings. It's going out and enjoying some greenery enjoying the sounds of birds and animals and knowing and understanding how long a tree uh, takes to grow, for example. Well, it's uh, being active, so uh, schools are encouraged to do tree planting, caring for the trees and uh, actually learning the role of trees which is not just uh, providing uh, oxygen and taking in carbon dioxide, but how about all the products made by trees, the different products which are in most of the things that we consume. Well, um, back again. Young Reporters for the Environment, as the, uh, as the program uh, indicates, it's encouraging uh, students to become journalists. This can be done through three different types of uh, projects. Either writing articles, taking photos, or even producing short video clips to drive the message across. It's not uh, complaining about the situation. As with ethical schools, it's uh, more trying to find solutions and encouraging others, creating awareness. It's important in the Young Reporters for the Environment to investigate the situation, research, do the report, and then disseminate. So, how do the Sustainable Development Goals link to eco-schools? Probably most of you are by now familiar about the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. From now on, I'm going to go through each of the development goals. There will be a little bit of text showing how the eco-schools management and the fee programs follow the SDGs, the SDGs and uh, encourage awareness about them. But below each, there will be photos giving ideas of projects which can be done between schools. Um, something I forgot to say is with the linking and uh, Informing uh, step, schools are encouraged to work to collaborate with other schools, either in their own country or outside their own country. E-twinning is the ideal platform for um, inter-school collaboration, and it's a great opportunity that uh, students share their, share their successes, share their ideas, tell each other what they did, how they did it, learn from each other. Besides the experience of actually speaking and communicating with children of their own age from different countries. So, going on to the first SDG, no poverty. Not all students are aware of the poverty around us, but a lot can be done. In Malta, we have a culture of collecting uh, money to help countries, uh, what we used to call third world countries, to support them by money. But it's not just that. Now we have 
different problems and poverty is also within the country as well so they do research they learn about different situations and uh, for example this one this uh, this uh, picture shows uh, that uh, since we have in Malta a great influx of immigrants and well they come here empty-handed they will need clothes and other items to live but one student got to know this particular person from Ghana who was not only managing to get uh, clothes and things for himself but was practically collecting uh, enough items and getting enough money by through collection to send containers full of those things to his village where to the village where he came from and it was really emotional to see he provided even uh, videos of him going back with the containers and distributing the clothes to the children and the poor families where he came from uh, poverty can be also understood through uh, different ideas and uh, mind you uh, whatever the project it's practically impossible to work on one single SDG for example this uh, is the eco brick project the eco brick project helps to reduce litter uh, and waste and by learning to make these eco bricks many items can be done and these these children were managing actually to build their classrooms with the eco bricks so it's also learning other people's needs and trying to be creative zero hunger there are many ways of tackling hunger okay food provi food provision but if some, some people might say okay uh, i can eat less it's not a question of eating less it's more a question of not learning about responsible food consumption and responsible food consumption is the best way to, for kids to learn by learning to grow their own food it's ideal that uh, the children get to know where the potatoes come from where the things that they eat come from even if they are packaged how about reading the packaging to see whether it's processed whether it's uh, it, how far it came from whether it could have been made uh, uh, packed using less packaging the carbon footprint related to it it all makes a difference zero hunger can also be linked to uh, uh, countries where the uh, food is produced but they get to pay to be paid quite less and that will be linking to another SDG equality and uh, fair trade well this is another project made uh, by a school I guess the link teacher is one of the participants today uh, they learned that from the past our ancestors used to do a lot of foraging that is going out in the wild practically and uh, picking up uh, plants which were edible good to eat it's quite difficult to do it today but this eco schools committee actually went out in the valley learned to identify the plants learned to uh, to know how to pick the plant without destroying it using the parts that they needed only check that it's not contaminated and then actually cooked quite a few things and I can assure that they cooked lovely cakes made nice smoothies and they got everybody to try them out as well another uh, project which can be linked it's uh, was the Eat with Responsibly project though as a project it was cl it's closed now we Eat Responsibly is still going on it's very important to learn about eating responsibly not only as consumption but also wasting and th well things that I've already been speaking about but how about uh, eating organic 
How difficult is it to grow organic? How difficult is it to have clean food? Good health and well-being is not only about food, though. It's also about taking care of others. It's, uh, some, uh, some committees went into uh, the psychological health of people. We got kids going into old people's home and speaking with old people. That way it worked both ways. The old people and really enjoyed speaking about their past, telling them how they lived, what they used, and the sort. They liked the company, and the children learned lots of things. The other way around, the kids took their tablets with them to the old people's home, and they showed them, for example, um, since in Malta we've got a lot of uh, migrants who went to other countries, how they could communicate with their sons and grandsons in other countries using Skype and, that, and those things. It helps people feel better and, well, when you feel better, it's good health for sure. Quality education. Um, there are schools who focused on the equal chances to, uh, for education. Most countries, well, most countries in Europe take to, tend to take it for granted that everybody goes to school. But how about other countries? And they focus on, on finding different photos of children going to school. Um, what resources they had. How difficult it is. Uh, did they have coffee books to write on? Or did they write in the sand? Did they have electricity for the night to read? Or they just use candlelight? Or waited till the morning? It's so many things. It's all related also to cultures, learning about different cultures, different religions, different beliefs. But quality education, they all discovered, is important for, uh, for everybody to go ahead, move forward for a better life. Uh, international cooperation, as I already, I already said, helps also to uh, understand uh, through uh, uh, to be understood through young reporters for the environment. This group of kids contacted uh, uh, a group from uh, Madagascar and learned what it takes to make a chocolate bar. Who are the people who work to get so that we get our chocolate? What does it take? How much are they paid? Have they ever tasted chocolate? And that's also education. Quality education. Uh, they discovered that there were children having to go to work rather than go to school, and it's not possible for them because they have to get money for their family to eat. Gender equality. It can be done different ways. Uh, some some uh, students went into asking about uh, the different wages between males and females. They got uh, this particular school managed to uh, bring to school, it's a girl school, they managed to bring to school uh, female pilots, female astronauts, female firemen, female postmen, so they could see that it's not a man's job, it's, uh, it could be uh, a woman's job as well. So that is also gender equality. Clean water. Uh, accessibility to water, it's, this is practically a never-ending uh, topic. It could be started by uh, learning and checking whether the school collects the rainwater, whether the rainwater harvesting is taking place. I know schools who, uh, as an environmental review, checked, the students checked with all their families whether the houses, the places, the apartments they lived in were collecting the rainwater. Whether the rainwater collected, if collected, was being used. And they learned how good, what, is it, what it is used for. Another way was uh, fundraising. And uh, this, uh, the school from Malta, from Gozo actually, uh, collected funds and they sent it to another school. And they helped them to build this water reservoir. So they had access to water. This worked both ways because those kids 
had the chance to go to school rather than traveling miles to get uh, water and were sure to get clean water rather than having to walk three hours go to each way to get water and the water they they got could have been contaminated it's there's lots to learn about it we can learn about water foot the water footprint of items as well and that why water should never be wasted even if we have lakes and rivers this is another this is another eat winning project it's uh, it started off as a cultural heritage project actually but along the way one of the participants was participating in the water explorer project and uh, well ebot this robot was which was traveling over europe through the eat winning project became a water explorer ambassador uh, these kids managed to get funds to give every student and every adult working in the school a travel cap so that they they uh, did not need to use disposable cups anymore to buy hot chocolate drinks uh, whatever they needed they learned to uh, carry it around them with them affordable and clean energy most take it for granted but it's not so easy energy okay we switch on the light and we get we switch on the we switch on and we get light we have electricity but where is it coming from is it from a power station is it polluting or can we use solar energy can we use wind energy it, this can be done with this with with all ages these practically manage to buy some solar powered uh, toys practically to learn about uh, solar panels and then checked with the school most schools uh, in the island of Gozo have solar panels on them they monitor how much electricity is produced and the difference it, it is between that and the carbon footprint made by the power station to use that, that same energy decent work and economic growth it's so I, I think i have to go a bit faster right <laughs> well these kids got bandana shiva and interviewed her interviewed her about uh, the the changes that she's seeing around the world the country that she came from and the difficulties to get people to uh, be paid fairly these students on their hand made a fair trade campaign they learned about fair trade items tried to promote the use of them and encouraged um, shops to start selling more and more fair trade items industry innovation infrastructure trying to get more greenery in our cities by using live walls and green roofs or else even innovative projects could be by upcycling items or about uh, gathering old jeans and producing new items from them very useful items as well inequalities some committees uh, having uh, for example deaf students in their schools committed themselves as an action plan to learn at least a little bit of sign language to learn to communicate others uh, this was a campaign in collaboration with uh, Reza Academy um, informing them and getting to, to children aware of uh, the problems about uh, that refugees are facing having to abandon their homes and well the inequalities they're facing uh, children with special needs are also included it's important to have them part of the committee to get them involved to have their say and have others to uh, talk to learn about their needs there are there is a particular school for example the action plan is practically learning about autism and getting all the other schools in the region to uh, know and understand autism. Sustainable cities. These are examples of actually young reporters for the environment projects, which uh, try to get the message across. So it's uh, refusing to use disposable water bottles and filling up, collecting litter 
not wasting, uh, well, spreading the idea. These are other ideas to have sustainable cities, encouraging uh, plants to grow in, uh, in their cities as well. A responsible consumption. How about using uh, reusable bags rather than plastic disposable ones? Avoiding single-use plastic. Reach responsibly already. I spoke um, a project I spoke about um, encourages a lot of responsible consumption of food, but we tend to use a lot more things. Responsible consumption also leads to uh, actually using the fruits made by the trees produced by the trees, learning to, uh, to cook and to use the raw materials rather than preferring to buy ready-made. Quite a few uh, schools are uh, learning to uh, encouraging, uh, committees are encouraging school, uh, students to learn to cook, use traditional recipes, make innovative recipes, using healthier substitutes, the sort. Climate action. There's so much to say about that. From planting trees, but also thinking with consumption as well. Rainwater harvesting. Uh, well, you say it. <laughs> I'm trying to help. Life below water. All of you have heard about marine litter. There's so much to do. The school got involved in, uh, they, they uh, got in touch with uh, an organization which uh, rehabilitates uh, injured turtles, most of which are unfortunately uh, get sick because they have ingested plastic. And, uh, well, they adopted the turtle, and the photo shows the actual release of the turtle. They learned about so much about life below water and the damage being done. They uh, ended up going on the beach, sifting sand, checking on the amount of nerdles in the sand, small plastics and how long it takes for the plastic to well it doesn't disappear <laughs> life on land more planting exploring discovering peace justice and strong institutions it's a uh, good actually for example this is not uh, a real photo it's set up by a student to try to imagine what it would be, how one would feel, how would you end up with if your house was destroyed. And they created photos to, uh, to get you into the mood. Vandana Shiva is another ambassador for peace. Obviously, the Eco Schools is being such, uh, with the Foundation for Environmental Education, being such a huge organization uh, and so successful in sustainable development, it's uh, recognized by UNESCO and, well, these are the partners and institutional partners, which the corporate partners, which support the programs and work together for more sustain sustainable development. It's not just doing, but also getting a label. Eco schools to get the internationally renowned Eco schools green flag, and well, if you link it with eTwinning, you also get the eTwinning label, and it's two in one, and quite a lot of satisfaction from the students and teachers as well. These are some of our contacts, and uh, well, if you need to contact me, to ask any questions, go ahead. That's all, Augustine. Thank you very much, Marvik. Uh, it's a very hard work, what you have done, and the foundation. How, uh, how many years has the foundation uh, on? Marvik? Yes. Can you repeat? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, congratulations for all the, the, the hard work you have done during this how many years are the foundation and 
are eco schools working with the schools and communities? How many schools involved? You mean? How many years have have the foundation worked with the schools? Uh, eco schools is just twenty five years old this year. Oh, well, happy birthday then. <laughs> Thank you. So, is there any question for the attendees? I'm reading, and probably you as well, that all the attendees are very happy with your presentation. Uh, Marvik, yes. uh, representing Eco School today um, in e twinning in this uh, seminar organized by Sense Group. I would like to tell you that Sense Group is, you have a space in, in Sense Group just to uh, to forecast your fantastic work with the schools. Okay, uh, if there, is a, there are any questions, go ahead and ask them on the, on the group. Uh, Nasmi asked you that how can uh, be included in Eco School? Uh, you have to go to the ecoschools.global website and there are all the country operators. There's an organization for each country. One of the slides, uh, do I share my screen again? One of the slides shows uh, the context. Okay, yes, because Maria Neus would like to enroll in Ego School as well. So you have a lot of candidates to be future Ego School. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have done a, a very good work as, uh, explanating all the methodology and of course all the the sustainable development goals inside these uh, actions so i have to say that i just touched the tip of the iceberg because so there's so much to do and say with the sustainable development goals uh -huh. thank there's you very much you. okay you're thank welcome you. thank you thank you now uh, we are going. I'm going to to introduce, yes, uh, to Katarina and uh, Felipe. C can you open your video? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Okay. Thank you very much. Katarina has been working or oh, uh, in business has a business background, and she's fascinated uh, with sustainability. Uh, her mission is to help organizations to find what is their role in sustainability and how uh, this organization can, can contribute to a better world. Regarding education, she has been involved in projects promoting informal education and he, she has organized Skype lectures and joined high school students from Portugal, an international class of sustainability in the context of uh, SDG. So, Felipe, Felipe is Bachelor of, um, in Business Management uh, by the Pontifical Catholic University in, in Chile. He has a Master Bachelor of Arts uh, from the University of Data of Spain and has another master of logistics in uh, an operation management uh, by the University uh, Europea de Madrid. Um, he has uh, elaborated a, a project uh, called Reverse Logistics for E-Waste. At this moment, both of them are finishing the, the Master uh, Leadership for Sustainability in the Malmo University. Um, his thesis uh, is about teachers' collaborative networks on global ESD program. So, as you see, uh, they have a vast experience and I'm going to to give this uh, uh, time for them to to tell us about the benefits of working in collaborative projects. So, is your turn, 
Okay. And you're uh, listening okay. to us? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Alison, for the invite and Ravik. You're, you're um, very cool, even for us that we, we are working with eco schools in our thesis, but still you were able to use a lot of things. Um, and um, yeah, it's amazing to see also many things. Katarina, please, can you be closer to the to the mic, please? Okay. Is it better like this? Yeah, much better. Okay, uh, just on a personal note, it might be a little bit weird that people from management and that have been working in business are now doing a thesis on education. Probably we are not experts in terms of education, but we do have a lot of interest in this um, in education. For me, teachers have the the most important professions in the world, and I'm talking this seriously. Um, and that's why also we had the motivation to do our thesis on this. So we're doing our master's in sustainability, um, and we think that to actually be able to live in a world that is more sustainable, that, that everyone can uh, uh, can live good and um, in a sustainable way, that education has a very important role. Um, yes. And um, also to say that we started this thesis, this thesis after doing a project over Skype uh, with a high school from Portugal, uh, where we tried to answer uh, some questions of kids related to sustainability and with our classmates uh, from uh, school. So yeah, basically that's, that's it. Also, for the presentation of uh, related to the SDGs. And the SDGs are very much connected to each other. And this is actually a challenge when uh, bringing uh, sustainability to class because some things that may be good for society can harm the environment, for example. And some th things that could be good for the environment can harm society. An example, um, so to maybe for the environment, it's better for us to stop eating products that come from f far away. Um, so for example, stop eating uh, products that come from Cambodia because it's very far away, so it has a lot of um, put, uh, a lot of carbon emissions related to that. So we decide to start, to start eating products that are more local. But what about the jobs of those people? Um, there maybe will be lost if more people do like us. So it's also, it's always, things are very much connected. And it's how can we teach this to kids? Yeah, so our thesis is, is about, uh, not about this topic in specific, but how ES or how teaching ESD can become uh, more integrated in schools. Um, and how collaboration is part of this. I think all of us know that a little bit already. Um, so in this slide, we say, and we've done some research, where ESD seems to be more challenging than educating it in the formal e curriculums and requires also non-formal education and informal education. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard about the 21st century skills, but uh, basically um, they are based in the idea that the school of before uh, is based on uh, industrial needs, so people were being trained to do the same thing over and over again. And today with technology, when uh, things that can be done in the same way repeatedly, they were being replaced by machines. So how can sustainability also have the role in this? That is, how can people um, adapt to this digital world and what will be their functions? And so ESC, I think, also has a way to say in this. And related now to the eco schools, although it started as an environmental education program, from the interviews that we've done with the um, teachers, so we've done 10 interviews with teachers from eco schools and two interviews with the national operators. National operators are um, uh, responsible for the um, eco schools of that same country, okay? And um, it was very interesting to say exactly what uh, Marvik was saying, that it's about developing the critical thinking of kids. It's about developing 
uh, their sense of problem solving, of creativity as well. And this actually is what is most important for sustainability. It's not only about the environmental part and uh, building a good environmental behavior, but it's also about uh, developing these kind of skills that are needed in, uh, they will be needed in their lives more than actually before. Um, yeah, and uh, it has been su suggested that there's a gap between uh, teachers' ESD knowledge and their ESD training abilities. So now there's programs that are educating teachers. Maybe you know this more than actually we do. But it's how is it being teached? Is it being teached just like a lecture? Is it being teached by informal ways, non-formal ways? Because actually, related to sustainability, non-formal education has shown to be more successful in terms of actually building good behavior and critical thinking. And then also the role of NGOs. So Echo Schools is an NGO. And many times the governments that are responsible for building the curriculums, um, they are not so fast at ad adapting to the needs of society and to the needs of, of kids or of the, of, the fu of the future. So NGOs also play an important role here, especially in less developed countries or countries that are not yet implementing uh, ESD. Um, Yes, I don't know if now um, if you want to post questions, maybe you can write them and then in the end we can try to answer, although I know you probably know more than us. Um, well, uh, I'm Felipe. Um, my interest in education, I think it's been well, like 20 years or more. Since I was at school, I was always collaborating and uh, participating in volunteer things. And then I was also engaged in some uh, uh, NGOs for education for students related to environmental education, but, but also um, things related to human values. So somehow my I've been always volunteering in education. Well, going to the the lens through we look after our research, we took the, the concept of teachers' communities. Some of the findings we found after our previous re research in, uh, in the academia, like through papers and uh, journals, we found that to learn, to teach education for sustainable development, um, it's important to have a continuous education because most of the programs for being teacher does or do not include uh, education for sustainable development as a subject. Although it's increasing, but of course, older generations are not prepared with that from a in the formal education. So, one way we are thinking it's uh, we, we discovered it's good for pre prepare teachers for teaching. It's how teachers can educate each other. So, we can create these kind of communities where teachers interact inside the schools, but also outside the school with other teachers from other schools, from other countries, other cities other subjects and we that's basically what we do already in Italy. And well the case of Eco School was particularly interesting for uh, in the in that perspective. We'll talk more about that later. But we took this idea of teacher communities because um, we have the approach of communities of practice and professional learning communities that is a way that just teachers uh, it's a it's community it's specifically designed for teachers somehow uh, it's in the theoretical background so communities of practice are based on this quote that the generation of knowledge occurs when people interact in solving problems basically collaboration and interaction 
promote design thinking, innovation, solution thinking. This way, but uh, for being efficient, there are some requisites that you have to, to reach. So communities of practice, it's important that there exists mutual engagement of participants. That they have a, a, a similar vision, a joint enterprise with reinforces the responsibility of participants for mutual accountability and a shared repertory related to language, culture, and artifacts that are created throughout the time. Professional learning communities is quite similar. As I told you, the, the difference is quite is very slight, but communities of practice can be applied on any profession, any area of knowledge, and professional learning communities are specifically for teachers. And they have the characteristic of being supported and shared leadership, shared values and visions and goals. They are interested in the collective learning and application, and it is, this is focused on the outcomes in students, and share individual and, pra and individual practice and supportive conditions. But virtual communities of practice, or virtual uh, professional learning communities, has to, uh, to be to be effective. They need to have the willingness of the members to share information and the willingness to use this information. Without these two factors, there is no actually a, a knowledge creation. Um, and virtual communities, are like eTwinning, has this risk. Um, if people if is just sharing and nobody's reading, or if people is just reading and no sh and nobody's sharing, they are not uh, evolving. So basically, uh, you have the risk of stay uh, being stuck and uh, instead of create a real a real community. But the advantages are, as I mentioned before, that communities of practice are based on thinking together. So when people think together, it's able to create new things, new solutions, and new approach. Although the limitations and obstacles are, especially in uh, big communities, uh, can be uh, difficult sometimes to approach, and there are things like uh, language barriers, also people don't share their knowledge because they feel they are not good enough or they are not experts on their, on their, on their field. So the value of a community also needs to empower people to create this self-confidence to share knowledge and share experience. Sometimes it's not knowledge, but you can also inspire them. So and that's kind of the one of the advantages of, uh, of this uh, perspective. So we base our study related to collaboration in, uh, through this lens. So we took eco schools as a, as a, as a, uh, a population to study in um, because eco schools as an international an international platform, and it's an international community, has 1,400,000 teachers. Um, 51,000 schools about, well, we, sh we, sh we, sh we saw the, the statistics, the, the main numbers in the previous presentation. But this, this characteristics were, were quite interesting for us, especially because this approach of sharing knowledge Overseas is, uh, I think it's the way to reach sustainability or sustainable development as a broader concept. Um, <clears throat> and in terms of the eco schools and the advantages that we, so we talked to the teachers, to 10 teachers, and we could understand some of the advantages that they see the problem have, the problem of eco schools. And like I said, it's uh, not only about uh, having children being more aware of the environmental problems, but also about learning uh, skills, like uh, critical thinking, problem solving, also being entrepreneurs, 
they can also propose their own project, like I think you would mention. So, um, yeah, so they can actually, they hands dirty. I don't know if you have this expression in your country. Um, and this also helps in their own personal, in their own development, in their own professional development, especially if they are connected with other teachers from other eco schools. Uh, they are trying to do the same and trying to have the same impact in uh, children. Uh, and all the teachers that we talked are, were actually teachers that uh, were involved somehow in some kind of network. So they were uh, talking to other teachers about the eco schools, devo developing ideas together. Some of them would start projects together and teacher students from different countries would uh, collaborate. Um, but then they also said there are some difficulties uh, because many times the, the project, or in most countries, uh, most schools, the projects of eco schools are not um, in the curriculums. So skilled teachers who organize this, the schools who organize this, they have to do it outside the class. We even had some teachers that said they were meeting the students on the weekend. So we also have to do lot of commitment um, that it's only possible if the teacher is passionate about it, which uh, the two here I think probably are, um, but it, and it also sees that it, it has a value in their professional uh, development. Um, so, but there's a, a time scarcity that has to do with the way um, in, the, in the project, so you already have to do the project. Then if you want to collaborate, you also have to find some time to collaborate. Uh, and what we found out is that in the short to in the medium long run, uh, this is useful and actually it makes you lose, lo uh, makes you save time because, for example, you're looking for an idea for a project of Echo School. Uh, but if you communicate with other teachers, Maybe they can give you ideas that they've done in their own schools that you can implement in your own school. Or maybe you're facing a problem and then you talk with this mm -hmm. other teacher that is working um, uh, uh, in the same field. Thank you, Katarina. Okay. Uh, it's because there are two other participants. Okay. So, I, and, and the time, the time passed very, very fast. No problem. Uh, uh, would you like to say anything to conclude your speech? Um, I'm, I'm, maybe I'll check if there's a, a, any questions. I don't think so. Well, but basically we were, we were researching in this uh, perspective of collaboration and international collaboration specifically because uh, um, the scope of eco schools can be strengthened uh, much more with, uh, with more communication between teachers. And we know because we have contact with the main office that they're interested in, in more research about that to understand the, the needs of teachers. And uh, basically collaboration, as we saw before also, it's a goal 17 of the SDGs. So it's super important uh, to support education and teachers support each other. So avoid the isolation that sometimes can can be like teach a thing that it's not in all the curriculum. Yeah, thank you very much, Felipe. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, uh, we sorry, but we don't have time for questions because Sofia uh, is waiting and and Gonka as well. So thanks a lot, uh, Katarina and Felipe. Thank you. Thank you. Keep in touch. Uh, Sophia, is your turn? Yes. Hello. Uh, do you want me uh, I open your presentation? Yes, yes, you have loaded it. Yeah, I am going to do oh, it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it is. 
Yes, this is it. And welcome. I'm sorry. And uh, Sofia Tsigara comes from Greece. Uh, she's working in the sixth, sixth kindergarten school of Bolos, and uh, her project and, and her colleagues uh, are related to cleaning a park where it is where the, where the school is. So, Sofia, now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to open my camera? Is, can you see your, yeah? Yes, I can see it. Can yes. you see me? Can you see me? Well, now it's okay, it's now you can see me. Yeah? Okay. Yes, we can see you very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just uh, I want uh, some help. Uh, how can I move my... Yeah, you just tell me. Next one. And I'll do it. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, hello, my name is Sofia Tsigara, <laughs> as Agustin said. Uh, I'm from Greece, in, in Volos, uh, Middle Greece. And uh, we are three teachers in our kindergarten school. Change, please. Our principal is Maridoni Katerina. And, uh, we did this action with the other teacher, Eleni Schiza. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here. We have 32 students. Let's see how all began. Every day our students come to school on foot and they have complained that the neighborhood park is filled with garbage, preventing them from playing there on their free time. One day, an email came at our school from El Mepa about environmental awareness. Kids happily agreed to take part in an action to save the environment by cleaning the neighborhood park. You can see the poster of El Mepa. Down we can see the site. Let's clean up Europe is the message of the poster. And you can see on Google Maps our spot, the park we went to clean. Now, how did, how did we work? Uh, we worked with uh, our students, me with my student and Miss Helen with hers. On the first day, we discussed with the children about what is needed to clean the garbage from the park and kids recommended that we should use large trash bags and plastic gloves. One kid also suggested wearing hats and applying sunscreen on our face, because we live in Greece. You can see the trash bags and the plastic gloves my students said, like those mom wears when she's doing the housework. Then we tried thinking of ways so that the park not only gets clean, but stays clean. Students from both classes recommended making posters. We work very much with posters in our classrooms, in a kindergarten uh, school, because it's a very good uh, way for uh, children who cannot write to just send their message. Let's see what uh, Miss Helen did with her class. Miss Helen's students decided to draw their version of an ideal park and asked Miss Helen to write the following slogans in the middle of the poster. We take care of parks, we love nature and always want it clean, we love the environment. Please don't litter in the parks. And the students of Miss Ellen's did this poster. In my class now, my students had a different idea. My students decided to draw park rules, such as we don't litter, recycle plastic, don't throw trash. In the middle of the poster, my students wrote our school's name. 
You can see my students, they are writing 6th Kindergarten School of Volos. The next slide. And here is our poster. And here is some drawings. Uh, children in a kindergarten school, they can write as they can hear. Uh, Greek uh, listeners can read uh, and see that some letters are missing. This is the way kindergarten students are writing. On the second day now, both classes on May 9th, we went to the park and split in teams of five. Two students were holding the bags and the three were picking up the garbage. But first of all, we had to put our gloves. It was a really funny moment. Our students really enjoyed it and laughed very much. Then we started working. And they worked really hard. You can see the garbage they in front of them. Then we tied the posters in two trees. This is Miss Ellen's poster. And here you can see Miss Ellen and the poster on the tree. And this is our poster my class's poster on the tree. Uh, we put a plastic cover on the poster so we can uh, protect them from the rain. After that, we returned back at our school. I discussed with my students and Miss Ellen's with hers. Both the class's kids agreed that the park was filled with cigarettes and bags, plastic bottles, and coffee cups. A small percentage of the garbage consisted of things children would throw, such as bags of chips, candy wraps, juice boxes, etc. We all agreed that regardless of age, it is our duty to protect and take care of the earth, because We are too small in this endless universe. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sophia. It's fantastic. <laughs> I I Thank love you. I love them, and I think after Echo School, after Marvik, Katarina, and Felipe explanation, uh, your uh, freshness work of your students is the, the very best example to 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 to, to feel the our your work is is the teacher's work is useful and very ne necessary. Thank you very much. And to finish Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah, thank you Sophia again. Thank you very much. And to finish uh, is Gonka from Turkey. Uh, hello, Gonka. Hello. Ah, hello. How are you? Do you want me to open your presentation? Yeah, it is. Sorry, is this one? This one. Gonka, would you like to to read? You want me? Are you okay? Sorry. Do you want me? Do you want me to read it, Gonka, for you, or do you? Would you like to read it? Gonka. Uh, 
Jill Dirim uh, is a teacher of biology in a high school. Uh, her school name is Turhal Seker Fen Lisesi. Um, she has done the project called a Step to Recycle, to Step to Recycling. They have obtained products from waste and they, they have cleaned uh, contaminated areas and they prepare videos and on recycling. They took pictures, photos um, and on how the project uh, was uh, developing. She is a biology teacher um, and she told me uh, and she has been teaching for 10 years at this moment and she is uh, in a, an e-tuning recycling project. So she told me she has problems with English or French and I, we, we really don't know if there is any volunteer. Uh, Nazmi, would you like to translate into English? I, we've got uh, an attendee from Turkey that is telling me I pronounce wrong uh, her name, so I apologize because it's very difficult for, for me to, to read names in, in different languages. Uh, so, Nazmi, would you like... Ah, of course... Uh, uh, Natsumi, can you can you can you tell me if you can translate Natsumi? Uh, uh, sorry, don't come. Um, my presentation from Turkey. Into into English. Yeah. Well, I am waiting. Hello? Hello? Can you can you speak on can? We we can hear you. Can you speak? Turkish. Oh no. Turkish. Good. I I I'm no. going to Nasmi probably can translate for us. Let's see. Let's see. Nasmi. Nasmi, now you can open your microphone. And help Gonka if you ask me. I don't understand. Yeah, sorry about it. Uh, Nasmi is a Turkish uh, colleague, and I asked him to help us. So, if you can hear me, Nasmi, can you open your microphone? Meanwhile, I'm going to, to pass uh, the presentation. Well, uh, her first goal is to protect nature in, in this project. So, in her school, they in, in, implemented various uh, activities to raise awareness about recycling. Um, her work in the project was uh, basically uh, in, in three phases. The first one was about waste product creation. Next one, cleaning of dirty areas. And the last one, videos and photos work on recycling. And her work is, is keep on. So, 
these are some pictures of their student of her student you can see how they use the the tire they they planted flowers fancies and they have built a sort of bricks as well as Marvik uh, show us in 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 her uh, presentation and they use some elements okay. some plastics for pla flower pots and some other the uh, old uh, plastic things for, for as a container as you can see they have done with uh, with garbage or uh, nods or with uh, some uh, funny toys as these robots yeah there are some plant containers with with tires and beautiful a beautiful lighthouse with wooden Yeah, there are some other examples of, of what these colleagues in, in Turkey have done. And they prepare some containers for plastic paper and, and this one for um, glass. And here as well we can see how they are working and, and preparing. I think they are made with uh, paper. They are rolling paper and look at this beautiful basket with a lid and a, and a windmill. Fantastic. And in technology, they prepare some, uh, well, some excavators and cranes and pencils, containers, and, uh, and a, sun, a sun clock, and uh, ah, these these are games. These are toys, no, for for the children to uh, to play. It's fantastic. And um, this is some flowers probably made with paper and they prepare as well uh, they plant seeds and this is a very a good uh, um, orographic uh, scenery <laughs> ah this is a wonderful way to 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 maintain, to keep the soil and avoid the erosion. Uh, I think the the tires are a, a basic part of, of your of your project, and they have collected a lot of a lot of plastic uh, bottle of plastics. Well done, and they use them to collect uh, batteries. To be recycled, and I, I think that's oil, and that was before they they clean the area, and this is the after, and this is a fantastic work of your students. Well done, Runka, fantastic. And here after the hard work, well done. And all the students in action, before and after, fantastic. And waiting the, the dustbin man to collect the, the plastic. 
I think you you spent uh, time to to clean this area is fantastic. That was before and after Gonka students passed collecting all the plastic and other elements that ruin our environment. Fantastic. I think this is a very good way, no, to empower the youth, our students, because in a few years they'll be adults and they educate the children, keeping and protecting the, the environment. And these are good examples of videos, pictures, and some links where you can see the her fantastic uh, project about cleaning the environment near her school. They prepare a blog, the Facebook and Instagram, and in each training you, you can visit the each training project as well. We are not going to open the links because we are uh, out of time. So these are all the school team, they collaborated in this uh, fantastic uh, project. Yeah. Well done. Well done, Mrs. Yildirim, fantastic. And thanks to you for staying here with us today. Well done. Would you like would you like anything to say? Ah, th thanks to you, because you have done a very hard work. I emailed um, a, a friend of mine who is biologist and works in Istanbul University just to help us translating it, uh, from Turkey into English. But he couldn't stay today with us. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well done. Fantastic. Is there, is there any question just before I we finish our our seminar. Well, tomorrow uh, I hope you can attend our our seminar as well. We have fantastic um, uh, people who are coming. Lucia Vasquez. Um, she we will talk about education and sustainability, and um, two teachers, one from Spain and the other one from Jordan. So, oh, somebody, yes? Yes, can you, can you say something? Because somebody would like to, to say anything? Hello, Sebda? You can, you can talk. Septa? Yeah, tomorrow we'll continue. Thank you very much indeed. At 6 p.m. Central European time. Bye bye. Thank you for, for, for attending our first seminar. Thank you very much. And see you tomorrow.